It's the hog style. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the hog style. The skin season may be over, but all is not lost. We've had a wonderful time covering the team with you this year. We're going to talk about the Packers game because it is our duty, but we also want to take a look back at where we've come from and a look forward at where we're heading. So keep your heads up. I know it's a tough day, but we're going to get through this together. My name's Sean Conti. The crew is here in its full form today. I've got Mr. Steve Thomas. You are amazingly chipper considering we just watched the Redskins lost, Sean, so I applaud you. I'm snorting a big line, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mr. Alex Zeese? Well, I didn't snort any lines because, you know, i got to... You know, pass those government drug tests. But other than that... Pesky, pesky government drug tests. Yeah. Mr. Robbie Duncan is also with us today. Robbie, how are you soldiering on through this loss? Hello. Not very well. <laughs> that is, is, that the, is the most there. down Robbie we've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, this is actually really sad. That was sadder than what I just witnessed on the TV screen. <laughs> not quite. Shit. I'm yeah. not that bad off. I'm just, no, I was just joking, but it still <laughs> yeah. sucks. Yeah. It's a rough one. Um, I, we've got to talk about the game, kind of deduce where it all went wrong after we came out to that early lead. I think I also really want to talk about this playoff game as opposed to the 2012 playoff game. I hope you guys will indulge me there. Sure. And then I think we want to take sure. a look at the future, too, Yeah, where we're heading. So, full slate tonight, but let's get right into it. Um, anybody want to start with what they saw from the game? I mean... Uh, can I start just uh, – let me just give some over, broad overview thoughts. We can kind of go from there. Um, Painted in broad strokes, I like I, In broad strokes, I thought the team was really, really amped up in the beginning, um, probably too much. They were kind of tight, and, and it was fine when things were going well. But the instant things started going wrong, I think the team kind of lost their, their mental edge, uh, you yeah. know, and, and got a little bit down, wh- whereas the Packers have been there before. It didn't mm-hmm. start off well for him, but but Aaron Rodgers, you know, Aaron Rodgers didn't play very well today for him, but yeah, he came through when it mattered, and he didn't quit, and he didn't give up, um, you know, and so I think the Packers showed that they were the better team and the better playoff team. Uh, I think the Redskins can chalk this up as a learning experience more mm-hmm. than anything. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, well, I'm going to just say, you know, I don't think there's anything we could have done differently and won this game, to, to be honest. They have better Expound players. They have, you yeah. know, a more experienced staff, more experienced players. You know, okay, yeah, we could have – Deshaun could have gotten that touchdown early on. We could have made that extra point, and then we would have lost by five less points. Yeah, it yeah. didn't matter. You know, like it's there's point. very little that could have gone our way to win this game without it played out. And, you know, th- as you said, th- this is kind of – this is a growing experience for this team. Right. Robbie, well, any main major thoughts from you? Broad was, strokes speaking. Yeah, the Packers had their backup left tackle playing, or backup center playing left tackle. Mm-hmm. We had pressure early on, and then all of a sudden it disappeared. We yeah. got zero pressure after that safety, like yeah. hardly anything. This is a this that's is a great the most point. disappointing thing to me. That was yeah. the thing I thought would be the easiest part of our game, but we, we, yeah. we didn't bring it. Well, so, yeah, so not only actually, that, but Brian Bulaga was also hurt too. You know, you know the Packers yeah. generally and were, he, were beat. Huh? Bulaga? Sorry, I, Brian Bulaga uh, freaking sucks. Yeah, he was holding <laughs> Kerrigan almost all game. That, that's yeah, the other thing that pissed of, me off. We, there was so many uh, non calls that the refs missed on the Packers tonight. That I mean, I hate to put it on the on the refs and oh yeah, we lost because of the refs, but. I mean, come on, man. There was at least five different holds out there that, that they missed. On Kerrigan, uh, there was a hold on Dunbar when James Starks was mm-hmm. running outside. It's it's very frustrating. And I don't yeah. think you could say this loss is on those, you know, the refs no. more or less held the flag through most of the game. Yeah, they called that uh, pass interference against Dunbar that was clearly out of bounds. Not, yeah, but, right. But, you know, other than that, they more or less just let everyone play most of the game. So yeah. I can't I can't be too upset about that. I mean Pereira's reasoning on that one was the receiver had his fingertips like 
Let me tell you something. Almost on the That's ball. nice. I, it was four feet over his head. Right, exactly. I, I, let me tell you <laughs> something. I mean, I'm not defending it, trust me. Yeah. I, I hate Mike Pereira. I, I don't listen to him. He All he is is a shill for the for the refs every single week, every single call. He's exp- he's trying to make apologies for the refs. You know, in this June mm-hmm. territory, has screwed things up in the past. C- certainly, it wasn't their fault. The Packers beat us. They were the better well, team today. They're the better team, period. But I do think the refs um, certainly ignored the holding calls on Kerrigan. I counted five five penalties but i kind of gave up there toward the end there might have been more but we had at least five penalties and green bay far fewer Mm -hmm. yeah so 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 this is all great point i mean this is all good stuff the refs definitely played a part in this and we should talk about that bad calls but i want to ask you guys this specifically this is sort of to your point uh, initially steve where did it where did that momentum go at what point did that really shift away from funny it's funny you ask because i wrote it i have seven pages of notes for this game believe it or not psychopath (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I actually wrote the moment. I will, if I can find it in my seven pages. Um, I mean, it's just crazy. 11 to 0, and then total just inability to stop anything. What was mm-hmm. it, 20-something mm-hmm. on any points? I lost track. Yeah, um, here it is. This was the, uh, the fo- where I thought the momentum completely changed was third quarter. It was the, it was fourth and one. Eddie Lacy uh, went left. To, to their left side, our right side, and, you know, it was in ran for, what, about nine yards, I believe. I thought that was the moment when momentum changed because, um, you know, Green Bay was excited. You know, Washington was excited. Mm-hmm. You know, McCarthy, you know, called that fourth one. Had we stopped Lacey then, I think the yeah. defense would have been really pumped. I thought that was that was the moment that momentum changed, was that Eddie Lacey run on fourth and one in the third quarter. And, and I think that's a fair point because – Really, then they broke our back with the next very next play, running to the left again and going about 30 yards on us with fat old Eddie Lacy rumbling down the field. God, it's hard to watch his bubble gut yeah. hustling around. <laughs> he, and and he's not into like a you know secondary. big boy like Brandon Jacobs who ran with power. He's just fat. He's just he's fat. a modern yeah. day um, Jerome Bettis. <laughs> no, Jerome Jerome hurt you. This guy's just kind of you know is chubby. Ate yeah, too many donuts. He's not that good either. Yeah, he's he's not that good. And this is what I want to ask you guys too: is is everybody said it throughout the week? You've got to stop the Packers from running. It's not that hard of a thing to fucking well, do. Wait a You've minute. got to stop them from running. We haven't mm-hmm. stopped anybody from running all year. Why did anybody but the think Packers this team was been ever going to stop? No, we we faced teams that that statistically, you know, are about like the Packers. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. we faced four or five teams that were, you know, their running backs are averaging in the low four range yards per carry, and all yeah. of those teams ran all over us. You know, no, they didn't I always rack up the. I'm, th- that's just it's no, just a fact. No, I get we that completely, but think about it this way: nobody's, everybody's saying that the Packers receivers can't get separation. They didn't exactly torch us through the air, particularly uh, through the first no. part of the game. Uh, other than Will Blackman, was, our our defenders played well. Played very even, well. So that's what Blackman I'm saying. I'm not saying Blackman there's some intimidating terrible. running force. I'm yeah. just saying that is what you needed to stop to really neutralize them completely. We didn't do I, I that. Think, and you're right. It's a continuation of the whole season. Yeah. I think the one area where, where Scott McGowan really failed was to put run defenders out there on the defensive line. We, we've gotten worse. You know, we were pretty good at it last um, last season and years before, and we've gotten way worse. And we're, you know, one of the very worst teams in the NFL at it. And, you know, he's the guy who put the line together. He shares right. some blame for it. Well, I think he shares some blame sure. for it. But I'd also say that uh, part of its scheme, I mean, this, you know, if they're going to run it against you and you keep on sending out, you know, a 2-4 look, they're going to win. And, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. If we're going to be a 4-3 team again, which I wouldn't mind, then commit and put a third linebacker in there if you're going to you know, play Kerrigan and Smith as defensive ends. Okay. Well, I'd like to ask Robbie about that because I don't think Kerrigan is an overlaid dynamic when it comes to run game pursuit anyway. I, no. You know, I, I think many teams no. ran directly He's a pass rusher. Yeah, exactly. He's not very agile. He doesn't change directions no. very well. <clears throat> He's just straight up the field type guy. Mm-hmm. Don't you can't ask him to to move side to side? I don't think. Yeah. Well, I don't think well, Preston Smith for all the progress he made. I'm not sure Preston Smith is really any better in terms of run pursuit. You know, no, the guy they, has they, turned into a pass rusher. If you go back and look at their uh, their um, st- uh, stats from the combine, they were pretty much the exact same player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, wow. numbers wise, they were exact same. 
So I mean, it's translated so differently. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, well, specifically speaking to the passing game, it like Alex said, it didn't seem like we had much trouble there. Towards the end of the game, it seemed like guys were getting open again, and there were a couple plays where dudes were just mm-hmm. wide the fuck open. And I don't know. I wanted to ask you guys specifically, Robbie. I don't know if you have any insight into this, but. I mean, what was it that opened that up towards the end of the game? Because it seemed like by the end, when we really should have been tightening things up, that's when they actually offensively got a lot better as the game went on. Just uh, no pressure. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had time to sit back there and make something happen and right. waited for his guys to get open. Yep. It, it, was, it, was it guys not getting there, or was it just not sending enough people? Or no. what, what? I mean, what's the problem? I mean, we've been able to get pressure the past couple weeks with just four guys. We didn't blitz that much. It's just... Guys weren't getting there. I don't. Not executing. Yeah, you don't. They're not shedding blocks, but good enough. You know, not a good enough push up front to, you know, to give Aaron Rodgers some panic. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you guys this too, and I think we've sort of gotten into this. But what was the overall key to this loss for the game? Like, what if we could just change this one aspect? Might we have had a chance? Um. I mean, I don't think there's one key. I, I would say that the uh, closest thing that I saw as an issue was just an inability to kind of adjust after Green Bay adjusted. Yeah. I mean... Which has been a problem with Gruden all season long. Well, and it's not gr- just Gruden. It's offense, defense. It, it's, you know, the whole coaching staff. Absolutely. Um, For me... When we get beat, that's how we get beat. Yeah. For me, it would it would have been Deshaun Jackson actually... Reaching for the pylon on that would should have been a touchdown. Yeah, that would have been early momentum, and who knows what you know. With everything else that played out, we would have been up by more than what we were. But yeah, so the Packers adjusted to what we were doing in the first quarter pretty easily. I mean, nothing was getting was allowed outside. You know, they tried to take away Jordan Reed from us, Mm -hmm. and guys just weren't getting open either. So I mean. I didn't think we adjusted well on defense either. No. Yeah. It's been a problem all year. Yeah. You know, num- number one, I-, I don't know. We need to see the All-22 film, I guess, first. But I really want to know what happened to Deshaun Jackson. I was really surprised that they contained him and he wasn't really open that I could see from the TV at least yeah. very much. You know, because I thought with Sam Shields out that they were going to have the speed to cover him. And I-, I don't know if they were shading a safety over on the on the top end or what. Um, that was one thing. And in terms of um, their offense, you know, I, I thought what really happened is they really went to really up tempo, no huddle, up tempo all the time, you yeah. know, like a chip I want Kelly to talk about kind that. of offense. And, yeah. and I thought yeah. that really just utterly bamboozled our defense a little bit. We got caught what tw- at least twice trying to substitute in players in and out. And, and Rodgers you know, I was hate enough that. to get us. Yeah, I hate well, that, Steve. Yeah. I don't it like works. that. Though. That's pussy football. That is yep. a perfect Green Bay fudge packer play. To yeah. You, you try to, you know, snap the ball when the other team's making a substitution because you can't beat them playing football, so you fucking fight them with you know that. What? You know, that's like a Bill Belichick Whatever move. Win. I hate Whatever that wins. Shit. Whatever. I, I it, mean, I don't blame them. It's a less than way to do it. I agree with Sean. You it, know, it's I, in the rules, but it, right, it's like right. the law. There's things in the law that are not honorable, but they're the law. Yeah, I, you I, know. I just hate that, you know? I hate that. And then, you know, you get 20 fucking sustained seconds of Aaron Rodgers in slow motion, like, you know, drinking from a cup yeah. or, like, Look drinking at me. I'm Gatorade. I'm so smart. I figured out that they want to switch players out. Yeah, I, I date a supermodel, and I'm a football god. And then they cut to commercial, and guess whose fucking face is staring me down again, guys? Aaron Rodgers has at least Dis- three fucking commercials mm-hmm. every commercial Discount break. double check. Yeah. <laughs> Discount double check, and they're not even that funny, guys. They're not that funny. They were the funny. first 100,000 times I right, saw right, them. Right, you know, they were Now that they've funny. done 40 different re- re- revamped versions of that, come up with something new. Seriously. I can't take it, man. He's overexposed, mm-hmm. dude. He's overexposed, and I, I just... Oh, well, this game by the way, car insurance is a ripoff, except for the fact that I totally am using it right now, so it's not. But yeah. well, listen, uh, you know, the the, the offense was so up tempo for about two full quarters, yeah. and it just or the defense got worn down. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I defer to Robbie's expertise as to what happened on the pass rush after that first quarter because it just utterly disappeared. Like a bunch you said, of bullshit and, happened. Well, when they when you have the the backup center 
you know, playing left tackle, there's no excuse to not get five or six sacks on a quarterback yeah. from my perspective. But, but I think it was very clear that by the middle of the third quarter, our defense was just exhausted. Yeah. It, you know, they were out of their element. They didn't know what to do. You know, the, the, I don't, we got out adjusted. We got outplayed. Yeah. They were yeah. better. Yeah. It, you know, there's no other way to put it, put say. it. No. Yeah, there's no other way to put it, and both offense and defense petered out. Now, sorry, Robbie, if you had something to say there, please do. I'm going to take just, us somewhere else. I was just going to say the offensive line, pass blocking wise, was was pretty terrible tonight too. Yes. Morgan Moses got beat like a drum. That was for like that the one third sack. play of the game. That sucked. That yeah, was pretty really awful on that one. And sack then at the end than. of the game, Trent Williams, I I don't know what happened to him, but he just he must have just shut down or whatever because he was getting his ass kicked by Nick Perry. Yeah. Like, I, honestly, I, I thought that Trent, you know, I'm not going to use a word. I Alex and I were talking about this off air, and Alex criticized my, my characterization of it, so I will recharacterize it. I, I thought Trent um, kind of gave up a little bit, honestly. I think, you know, he, I saw him a lot of standing around, not max effort, he, you know, and that was when he started getting beat. You know, I think he, you yeah. know, the game kind of got into his head, and he sort of stopped – Going full 100 percent a little bit, and that was why I got beat. Either I mean, it's either that or you know the Packers knew they had a lead. Nick Perry was rushing him, and just knew he could go all out in his pass rush, pass rush to get to Kirk. Yep. And he pulled every stop that he could to beat Trent. And it wasn't just Nick Perry too. I mean, there was one play. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Clay Matthews. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he got under Trent and. Almost just completely bulldozed him, like went right through him mm-hmm. in a in a in a bull rush, and it was. Is what, what's Trent's been with dis- us? What five years now? Is it five years? I, I, uh, I've so never yeah, seen year five or six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've right never now. seen yeah. Trent get beat like that consistently yeah. than, than I did today. That was his the worst performance Trent has had as a Redskin that I, Mister Amateur O Line Observer, has seen. Is he trending yeah, I, downwards, guys? No, that was over his, his career. He, I mean, today no. he did. <laughs> This, just I mean, just today. Yeah, today yeah, was not today a good was day. A, today was a bad day. I feel like he's had he had an awesome start to his career. Then he got a little banged up. Some stuff happened. Don't get me wrong. He is a beast, and he deserves his Pro Bowl spots. But I do also sometimes, in games like this, feel like he might be benefiting a bit from first impressions being kind of hard to shake. Mm. I'm not – trust me, don't take that too too much. I'm not saying he's bad. You're, but, you're talking you know. from the perspective of the standard of Trent Williams. I mean, I get right. it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, he's definitely – you know, I, I thought last year he benefited from his reputation a little bit in terms of his Pro Bowl selection. Uh, this year I thought he did fairly well for the most part. You know, every yeah. offensive tackle gives up sacks. You know, John Hanna, for God's sakes, yeah. gave up sacks every once in a while. You I mean, know, Chris Samuels gave up sacks. Joe Jacoby gave up a sack every once in a while. Everybody does. It's right, football. Yeah. Right. Nobody's um, perfect. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, he's had his moments. Yeah. You know, I, I thought today was his worst. We not, saw not Trent at day. his worst today. So, I mean, this is sure. two years in a row, though, where he has been pretty badly injured by the end of the season. It's kind of where I'm coming from with the banged up And stuff, I, exactly. I worry about that part of it. I mean, see, I don't understand how he would have been banged up, though. I mean, he had a week off last week. Yeah. I mean, he he didn't play. But Robbie, the, he was barely able to walk off the field the week before. I'm just that was a cramp. They're saying. Yeah. Well, I, they're saying. I I don't know. No, I think the, by that, I that think was what it was. What Maybe. Trent Williams considers an injury is a lot not what a normal human being would consider an injury. Right. You know, I think he is. Very, he is very banged up, but because he is so incredibly tough, even by football player standards, that a lot of the normal little nicks and you know cuts and stuff don't really register in the right. same way. You know, he's been on the injury since I follow all these injury reports and stuff that I know you guys don't read. Uh, he's been on the injury report for like eight weeks in a row. Yeah, know? see, <laughs> it, it might don't quote me on the eight exactly, but it's been weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks where he's been on the injury report. Right, that, that could that mean anything, me. you know, but. I mean, it's something to think about. Not everybody's on that injury report and, every and week. It's so all that well is something good to think that about. he plays through these injuries, Steve, but they're still going to build up on him over time. That's my point. I'm not disagreeing yeah, with you. I'm, not even do, I'm kind of agreeing with sort of what you're saying. Yeah. I, I just think we don't recognize it as much because he is so incredibly tough. Right. Yeah. You I know? mean, just because the guy can take a punch to the head or a wine bottle to the head or whatever. <laughs> Doesn't mean he should repeatedly. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
So, so guys, I want to ask you this, okay? This is a great place to talk about it. Can we just – I want to talk a little bit about comparison of the 2012 playoff team, the 2015 playoff team, and maybe we can start by just talking about the guys that were on both teams. Okay. Okay, so let's name them all right up front. Partic- I mean, we're just talking about starters here. Who cares about depth guys? But Kirk Cousins, obviously. Right. Alfred Morris, Alfred obviously. Mor- Alfred Morris. Pierre Morris, Garçon. Yeah. Jordan Reed. Pierre Garçon. No, Jordan Reed uh, was not Jordan, on the 2012 no. team yet. Wasn't he? No. I don't think Are so. Are you sure? Was he the next year? He was the next year? Yeah. Okay. So not Jordan Reed, but Pierre Garçon, definitely. Yes. Uh, kind of the principal three in terms of Alfred Morris, who wasn't really doing anything, Kirk Cousins, uh, and uh, uh, Pierre Garçon. Sure. Um, any, anybody else who played a major role in this game that uh, on also both played teams? in 2012? D-Hall, yeah. Trent Williams. D-Hall, Trent. Um, Good call. Ryan Kerrigan. Lichty. Of course. Goldie. Um, D-Y, yeah. Well, but... It's kind of he's a fullback, yeah. and I mean, you know how he's used. Uh, you know what? He, he's though, worth calling it's, out. Though. It's worth mentioning, yeah. yeah, because he had a much bigger role back then than he does now. I it's think worth he's kind of hit the highlights, basically. Yeah, you know, our entire secondary has changed, but D Hall, obviously, um, our entire D line has changed. Yep, our starting linebackers are different. Yeah, uh, I'm try- well, you know, our- what a. Uh- well, Swaggy would have been there, but he would—he wasn't a big, big contributor in 2012. No, no not not back then. Yeah. Offensively, you know, the quarterback was obviously Griffin. Then it's Cousins now. Mm-hmm. Alfred Morris is still well, not there. by the end of the year. Yeah, Cousins played in that playoff game. I well, yeah, not very good. But you know what? <laughs> Griffin was the primary quarterback right. back then. Yeah, Cousins yeah. is now. Alfred Morris is still the starting running back. Mm-hmm. Pierre Garcon is still a starting wide receiver. Trent Williams is starting the starting left tackle. Everybody else is different. Sure. The moral of this story being, though, there are a lot of similar pieces in place that were in place a few years ago we made the last right. playoff run. Now, here I want to take this a step further. The seasons are parallel in other ways, too. Both seasons, I think, involved sort of a late run, got hot at the end, got right. into the playoffs, took the division, and both playoff games started with early leads, by the Redskins, that they then squandered. Okay, so I want to just ask you guys this. Okay, everybody's talking about how the team is much, much improved this year. Mm -hmm. We're doing things better like converting on third down. We're (laughs) pass protecting better. There are less sacks. Things are happening better. But we've got one less win than we did in 2012, and the end result is the same. And this schedule was arguably far easier. Now, I am not saying... Not arguably. It was far easier. It was far easier. Arguably. So, I guess what I'm asking you guys is this. How do you reconcile that in your head as a fan? To say that this season was easier, and the team is better, but it actually performed just slightly less than that 2012 team did. How do you how do you reconcile that in your head? I think the team, I think the story remains unfinished. Yeah. You know, I don't think I don't think we know. I, I think the optimistic point of view would say, yeah, we've made progress and, you know, the team, you know, over overachieved this year. And, you know, there's a lot of young guys yeah. on the team, you know, um, on the offensive line, namely, you know, and in the secondary because the secondary was, you know, scotch tape and bubble gum all year. And they definitely over, you know, uh, outperformed their draft yeah. status. You could say that Kirk Cousins was a revelation. You know, the the pessimist, on the other hand, would say, you know, th- they played a very easy schedule. They lost to every good team they played. You know, Cousins got right. on a real hot streak to his credit. Um, but, you know, uh, the teams that had the good defenses, he didn't look quite as hot. You know, right. you could say mm-hmm. that Alfred Morris is, is a shell of himself from a statistical production standpoint. That is the definitely be, true. The, the truth may be somewhere in the middle. You know, again, I don't think we know really what's going to happen. I think there's definite, I'll say it like this, there's definite strengths. We've proven that when the offense is hot, they can move the ball, at least on the air. That's one strength. Right. We've, yep. we've proven that the offensive line is dramatically better in pass, produ- in, in pass protection. That's another thing. Yes. We have some talent in the secondary that Scott McLuhan found under, you know, in a garbage pail somewhere. <laughs> it, right. Some talent, not now, not a you lot. Can have, yeah, we you we can still need a starting corner, weaknesses. I think. There's some def Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's like some that. definite weaknesses. Running the running game is a weakness. For whatever reason, we all love Al Mo. You know, he drives the Mazda and all that stuff, but it, it's not working. It ain't working. It, it hasn't been working all year. That's a weakness. The The offensive line is not good in run blocking. That's a weakness. I yeah. think Kirk Cousins, while he's improved dramatically and everybody's excited about him, and, and I've come around. I was the biggest pessimist ever about Cousins. I've come around a little bit because the guy's improved and he's got better, you know, to his credit. But mm-hmm. he has a long way to go in my respect. Sure. Um, what about you guys? That's How do you compare? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. 
That makes total sense. What do you guys think? How do you compare 2012's playoff team to this one? I mean, it's so hard because at the end of 2012, we were all devastated with the RG3 uh, ACL injury. Uh, And if nothing less, you can say, well, we're healthy going into next year. So there's that. That's something. (laughs) I think you got to look at the guys we had on our team and all the injuries. I think we had tons more injuries on this season than we did in 2012. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. You look at our uh, secondary that was just, you know, basically playing with a bunch of Jags that were overachieving. Will Blackman, you know, yeah. Quentin Dunbar, who was playing receiver and in going into training camp, undrafted guy. Right. And then, uh, you know, guys off the streets, Mason Foster, linebacker. I mean, he was doing well. I, I don't think he was any, you know, he's not anyone to criticize. But mm-hmm. He had a great play today. You look at my point. We, we, we brought in guys off the streets. We... We overachieved, I think, higher than we did in 2012. Yep. I, I I do think, with even with the injuries that we had this year, I do think we're more talented than we were in 2012, at least on paper. And I think there's sure. no question about that. Sean, you started this conversation out by asking an interesting question. Let's look at the guys who were on both teams. Yep. And there are guys who are on both teams, sure. But now let's look <clears> at the guys who weren't on that team. And if you go position sure. by position, especially look at the O-line, Ravi, you can't yeah. help but say the other four guys we have now that aren't named Trent Williams are significantly better than the guys who are on that 2012 team, right? Oh, well, yeah. It's a different scheme, I, think, I know, but... Yeah, that that scheme made them look a lot better than they were. Right. Uh, yeah, think about the names on that offensive line. Yeah. Chris Chester, yeah. uh, Tyler Columbus. Columbus right. is the one that I was well, waiting for somebody to I, say. I would uh, always defer oh, you guys back Will to, Montgomery. Back to Will Montgomery, the statistical yeah. production. From a statistical production standpoint, uh, they were much better in pass production. This group was much worse in run blocking. You can say all you yeah, want about absolutely. the talent and all the names and all that stuff, but the bottom line is that group was way better in run blocking than this group. That group was also about a decade older on average. Let's also keep that. I in mind. I, I, I I hear you. You know, and our group has now has room to improve because they're young and they're going to get better. But you can't say that this group is better. They're they're way better in one skill and they're way worse in the other. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I think that's that's a fair point, and this is really what I'm driving at. Today in the Washington Post, or yesterday I believe it was, we had some glowing editorials about both Jay Gruden and Kirk Cousins. Glowing editorials and you know endorsements of these guys, which is fine. You know, which is great. Yeah. They've done some great things this season. But right. when you get right down to it, the question really is how much better is this team than the twenty twelve team? Is it significantly better? I mean really? Do I think it's better? Probably not, but I think you look at the foundation that's there and, and the building blocks that are there, and I think you can say the future is bright more so than 2012. I think 2012, you can look at it and say, that was just a hell of a run that we made, and it fizzled in the first round of the playoffs. You could say I don't that think anybody, exact same thing about us now. It's possible, but I think we have more building blocks, mm-hmm. like I'm saying. we got yeah. rookies that have come in and played outstandingly well. Preston Smith, Kaishon Jarrett, Quentin Dunbar. You know, we, we, we got guys that we can build off of and develop that will be yeah. consistent playmakers or impact players. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the way you got to look at it. 2012 was a hell of a run that we lost, and I don't think anybody really saw that as like, man, we're going to be good from now on. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I didn't see it that way. I don't know. Um, that's a fair point, I think. I don't know. I think what you're saying is week one next year is really going to Well, if Robert Griffin goal. had been healthy, I think it would have been a totally different story, honestly. Well, Maybe, sure. Yeah. But the, that, the knee injury really ruined the whole the whole plan. Well, I that, think, that ruined him. his whole career, frankly. Yeah. yeah uh, he should really never, did. I mean, you know, like that destroyed everything mm-hmm. that made him good. Um, but it's not just RG3. I mean, I think if you did a on-paper breakdown, you would look at a lot of positions and say, in hindsight, we are better off. Like receivers, we have a significantly yeah. upgraded receiving core now versus 2012. No question about that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fair. You, you went from Garcon being your number one guy to him your number three guy behind Deshaun Jackson and Jordan Reed. Right. And the yeah. supporting cast beneath him is stronger than it was in 2012 without any question. We right. didn't have Jamison Crowder. I think it can't be understated. Oh, no. The performance of Jamison Crowder this year, mm-hmm. it is so hard for wide receivers. Jamison Crowder would have been the number two in 2012 above Santana Moss. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he, and he's just uh, we yeah. that guy really hit it out of the park. Make no mistake, he would have outplayed Santana Moss in 2012. 
Yeah, I don't probably. Know about that, though though but... Santana had a, had a surprisingly good year. Yeah, he had a good year, but he was definitely on the downside far. of yeah, his agreed. you know talent career. And uh, and true. I think you know I think if you went through safeties, we were significantly better at safety this year than 2012. That is for sure. Yeah, you you maybe yes. could make an argument that Kerrigan and Orakpo in 2012 was better than uh, Kerrigan and everyone else who was playing at uh, in, outside linebacker, not inside linebacker. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I was a pretty big proponent of Brian Arakpo, but he was really limited in his skill set. Mm-hmm. He kind of had the one thing, the, the speed rush. Uh, Preston Smith may end up proving to be a more complete pass rusher than Brian Arakpo was. I think he's already a more complete rusher than Kerrigan is. He might be. He might uh, be our Kerrigan, number one guy next year. No, I'm ser- I'm serious, though. I, Kerrigan is very one-dimensional as well. He doesn't have a lot of moves. Mm-hmm. He's not very yeah. mobile. He's not a speed rusher. He's a guy that tries to get that rip move. And then it, he ends up getting held. I mean, that's I think very today much like was, a rackbow in a way. I think today was a very good example because you know the the Packers moved Julius Peppers all around <clears throat> up down the line. Yep. You saw him on the we right side. That. He was on the left side for a little bit. One well, of the reason we don't is that we don't really have anybody that scares us. Ryan Kerrigan has been our best, but I don't think he scares a lot of people. You know, because he's not like Robbie said. He's not really a dynamic athlete. Mm-hmm. He's not at the elite. He's kind of a B plus kind of guy. He's not gonna if you want to use a a grade. Sure, he's not he's gonna a be blue collar, high yes. motor guy. I, I I I'm not hating on him. I just don't no, think no, no, he's. No, no. I'm not saying he's I'm not an saying elite. He's not a dynamic. He's not, an, he's not a Von Miller. He, he's not gonna Listen. show you Hall of Fame potential. Is what you're saying? No, no. but he he's gonna be a solid, consistent right. player. But eight to ten second gonna, year guy. I mean, exactly. Junior Gallette might be that guy going yeah. forward if he gets it back, you know, from his Achilles injury. Not, but that's God, a tough. Keep your you don't want. Crossed. You don't necessarily want to bank on that. If nothing less, we yeah. have a crop of good though. guys who are all that kind of B B plus range, which that's fine. You know, a lot of teams wish they had that many decent rushers. Right. Scott's gonna Scott's gonna draft another outside linebacker in the in the second round. <laughs> Don't <and> Steve, say <laughs> Steve Steve's head's gonna, gonna lose explode. my mind. Come on, oh that's where we need to draft a center. Mind. If anything, that's where we draft our center. Well, I, I he, agree. He needs to draft some defensive line because honestly, I, I mean, just you know, the the major negative to me because I follow these stats every week is our our run defense is so abysmal. But that's linebacker has Steve. Been, that, well, it's also the defensive line. It's not just the linebackers. We, we haven't run a, a three-four consistently all year long. You know, most of our sets are show a four-three look. Honestly, yeah, I, I, you know, I said that in the, the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and um, it's not just the linebackers. You know, these defensive linemen have not been good when it comes to run defense. Again, they ran right at Ryan Kerrigan. You know, there's been teams that have been gashing yeah. A and B gaps the, on us There was all year one long. play, I, don't, I think it was the in the backers. third quarter, where Kerrigan had a shot at the running back about four yards deep. And I don't know if he got, like, the uh, li- the uh, lineman got his arm around his head or something. He spun around in, like, a weird do si thing and just completely missed the running back. <laughs> yeah. Whiff. And then he had a sack that he should have wrapped him up. I mean, he was right there. Mm-hmm. He had him right in his hands, and he and he couldn't wrap him up for the set. Yeah. So so this is well, actually a, 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 I like the line of conversation here. Maybe what we should do, and we should talk a little bit before we end about where we're going in the future. But maybe we should do this. What was your biggest disappointment from this year? Whether it's care this whether game it's or Morris, this year. This year, I'm talking about. If it's epitomized in this game, that's great. I feel like a lot was epitomized. Mm. In this game. Oh man, <laughs> um, I, the biggest disappointment for me was that our run game. Um, was was bad enough that it was not an asset to the team. See, and I that, think there that were is many games. In this game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think if we, there were many games, if we'd had a consistent run game, even not, I'm not even talking about having Adrian Peterson back there. If we'd had a a run, a rushing attack that could average four yards of carry consistently, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think several games would have been different and we would have been a much better team. So I guess if you have to point one thing to me, that's it. Because Kirk Cousins, for all the progress he made, he should not have been asked to carry the team like that all year long. Right. And it kind of came back to Hans a little bit today. Well, and what's ironic is I think if you look at the numbers today, we probably had one of our better days running the ball in the end. I can tell yeah. you. You want to know? I, I know we Morris were around 70 had... yards in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Was this you Morris' best game? No. No, well, no. You want to know some stats? Sure. Okay. It wasn't Morris's best game. I know that. <laughs> no, a big not, chunk not of our career, rushing yards came year. from Chris Thompson's draw, yeah. by yeah. the way. That was an awesome play. Good call out. Morris had a good 20-yard burst, too, at one point. 
He had a couple yeah. good runs. Yeah, he did. <laughs> All right. Um, Alfred Morris, 11 <laughs> carries, 50 yards, 4.5 oh, yards okay. average. The long was tw- 19 yards for him. Chris Thompson, one carry, 25 yards, because the other was a screen. So that's screen 80 pass. yards, I, I think, if I'm doing that yeah, in my head. Pierre, Th- Pierre Thomas, four carries, 7 yards. And then Kirk Cousins had two carries of 2 yards. Uh, so we total, we were 18 for 84 for 4.7 yards, including Cousins. So, um, and and on passing, just let me knock that out since we're here. Cousins passing was 29 to 46, 325, 329 yards, 7.2 yards average, and sacks six times. Rating that's what killed us there is those six sacks. Yeah, see, the quarterback play wasn't that bad, and we got some stuff done on the run. Yeah, it, I mean, you said it four, four plus yards a carry, which for us is great. Yeah, um, is. You know, compared to some of our games where we we're getting thirty to seventeen yards a game, um, so I and you know part of that probably is on Lichtensteiger coming back, but it, yeah, you kind of wish he was back the week before to kind of get more in the saddle. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Robbie, you could maybe yeah. talk to that. Like he hasn't played for eight weeks; he's got to feel a little rusty, right? Even a vet. I. Th- I think it showed. I mean, there was one play especially where he got just destroyed by B.J. Raji yeah. for the tackle for a loss. It was it was bad. Yeah, and so if you're asking what disappointed most of the year, Sean, uh, I mean, you could say running. Uh, I think there's definitely things you could point to on the defense. To me, and this is always something you have no control over, it's the injuries. Uh, yeah. Injuries devastated us early. And before the season even started, it seemed. Yeah, before the season even started, we had like eight guys on IR who were starters. Yeah. Um. So, and we've replaced them very well. Don't get me yeah. wrong on that, but still, we we've gone through a lot. We went through a lot of starters, a lot of good quality depth guys, and you know, you say, oh well, we're only nine and seven. We probably would have another win or two if we were a healthier team. It could very well be. Maybe. You never know. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah of course. But you're right. I mean, we lost our first string tight end. I know we've had a world beater, you know, grow into the tight end position. But we lost Junior Gallette, too, which was supposed to be huge. Lots happened mm-hmm. before the season about even started. Culver. About losing Niles Paul. I, I, I really do think, though, if Niles Paul was healthy, our offense would have been even more dynamic. Yeah. I really do think that. He was a versatile guy. Him and Jordan Reed together were going to be, I think, a pretty uh, – Tough to uh, cover matchup. Think of this five receiver set: in. Jordan Reed, Niles Paul, Jamison Crowder, Deshaun exactly. Jackson, and Pierre Garcon. You could have lined lined up Jordan Reed as a receiver with Niles Paul at tight end, or vice versa. They're they're both the same guy exactly. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, Did Niles we Paul's even... a better blocker than Jordan Reed. Yeah, sure. But... Yeah, which is nice. Which is what we've been missing too. But as but receivers, even... they're both very similar. Sure. And did we even run this year that many two tight end sets where they were both? We never had two tight ends for half the games. Exactly. We had Carrier for like three weeks. <laughs> right. Or whatever that ended up being. And We, we did know. run a lot of, of those sets. I mean, we didn't do anything passing-wise much out of it, but, yeah. but we ran a lot of running plays out of it. You know, Alex Smith would line up next to Jordan Reed or next to Tom Compton. Or Ty. If you want to call him a... <laughs> If you want to call Tom Compton a tight, a tight end, end, you might. Yeah. Have, yeah. You, you could say I, that. I don't. Steve I don't want to call him. A tight I think end. you got to put him in an eighty number uh, yeah. to do it. <laughs> Tom or Compton's 40s. my hero. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, well, that was part of the you know having him in there was pretty much a telegraph that that was going to be a run play. Yep. You know, so it wasn't. It was. I realized it was kind of out of necessity, but it wasn't always the smartest move to throw Tom Compton out there for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's flip this over, <clears throat> and let's take we've, – we've looked back throughout the year. I think we've done a pretty good job. Maybe we should just glance, take a little peek forward. Into, into the, the future. Ah. Exactly. Now, we can play a little speculation game. In fact, maybe we should do it this way. What is Kirk Cousins – what are Kirk Cousins and Jay Gruden thinking right now? Okay? They don't have, luckily, they don't have a nice long bus ride or airplane. No, they might even be home now. Well, I'm assuming Kirk didn't go to Shake Shack since they didn't win. Yeah, he didn't like that. No, he did not like that. <clears throat> um, I think I think they're both just gonna be you know going back to the drawing board and seeing you know what can we do different next year. You know what what can we improve right. on? What what is it that's our weakness right now? What's our what's the weakness to our game? 
you know, Kirk, what can you do to make yourself a better quarterback? What can I do to be a better coach? That kind of thing. How can we improve? Like Mm self-reflection. Yeah, how can we improve basically in every area? Because there's room almost everywhere, I think, on this team to improve a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I hope that what's going on is that the – that man, maybe you don't do tonight, but tomorrow in the next few days, they sit down with McLuhan. One, hopefully, ha- start hashing out that contract for Kirk, which I know is really going to be McLuhan and the uh, Kirk's agent, not Kirk himself. Mm-hmm. But you know, start hashing that out. But then start saying, okay, who who do you want to help you build this team? You know, like that's the question that should be asked to Cousins, should be asked to Gruden. What are the players that you really felt like helped you make a better team here? Yeah. And yeah. cuz we have yeah. to make They're decisions. We have to decide on Jackson that. or Garcon. The, no, I'm not so sure. Cousins Why not? not going to have Well, you know, it's because he's a player. He's not a front office person. No, yeah, but, but he's a quarterback. You know, Scott that is uh, he's cut above all the other players. Of the team. That Scott's going to ask I, Jay Gruden that question yeah. for sure. And Jay will probably so sure go, I care about Jay will probably talk to Cousins and say, "Hey, what, who, what receivers? If we were to say you can build here for five years, what receivers do you want?" Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know what? I hope I hope that Gruden is th- gonna go back. He's gonna sit down in front of the computer. He's gonna watch some game tape. And look, I totally get guys that it's third and nineteen, and you call like a delayed handoff or something. I get that there's strategy in that. Right, But I also can't help but notice that when we are aggressive early in games, it works. And then, for some reason, I feel like we start playing scared. So I hope that Gruden doesn't just look at his players. He doesn't just look at his roster. He doesn't just look at that stuff and think about how can I get the best players on the field. But I hope that he actually – and I'm not – look, I'm not saying he's horrible. But I hope that he actually looks at his own play calls, does a little analysis and sees, you know, where was I being aggressive and where was I playing mm-hmm. to not lose. You know, right. and I think there's many times that he was doing that. Right. That's what and I, I, I I'll be honest. I think that he got to that mode a little bit late in this game. In this game, exactly. Um. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Well, um, you know, it's very appropriate for the GM. First of all, ask the coach. You know what players he wants. You know all that. I I don't think it's appropriate necessarily for the. Um, to ask the quarterback, you know, at least nothing more than in passing. But in terms of what your point is, um, I, I think a lot of it in, in terms of the offense is that the defense is making adjustments to it. Adjustments. It's not really that we're playing scared. It's that we're getting beat. Yeah, yeah. more than anything. Getting outsmarted. You know, yeah. they're adjusting. They're adjusting to what we're doing. We have. We don't have as much talent as some of the teams, the good teams we're facing, and we just get beat. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just better. You know, more so than they're playing scared. You know, yeah. I think it's the easy. It's the it's an easy thing to say is oh they're playing scared, but the truth is, some of these teams are better than us. You know, the Green Bay Packers are a better team than us because they have a, a, a they have a Hall of Fame quarterback, and even in their limited injury state, they have better receivers who've been there before and they've done it before. They have Clay Matthews mm-hmm. on defense. We don't have anybody nearly as good as Clay Matthews. No, you know, no, not, we no. don't have Julius. Pe- even Julius Peppers at age thirty five is way better than anybody we have. They have talent. We don't that we don't have, and that is the root of why we lost mm-hmm. and yes. why we lose. So Scott McLuhan needs to fi- keep finding the talent. You know, he found some building blocks for us. It's going to mm-hmm. take another couple years before it happens for us. Yeah, especially on defense. Yeah. I think we're actually further along on offense at this point. I mean, if there's one yes. thing you can say about what Mike Depending Shanahan on who left, we lose is you left better offensive players than defensive. Yeah. Well, except our running game has gotten worse. I keep saying it over yeah. and over again, but it has. Yes, you're right. That has regressed significantly. But I, I, I really think that, you know, finding a good running back in the draft might be fairly easier than f- fixing this defense. Well, spoiler alert, or not spoiler, but looking ahead into the draft, at, we're now officially the 21st pick, and someone that's very likely going to be there at that pick is uh, regard at regard as the best draft uh, prospect for running backs in this class is Ezekiel Elliott mm-hmm. from Ohio State. It would fill a need. He, he, he's true. talented, and he's a dynamic player. He's a very good and pass pro. Mm-hmm. You know, solid, tough runner. He's he's faster than Alfred. I think it'd be hard for Scott to pass him up. You know, I mean, I hate taking a running back in the first round, but it at, makes sense. 
Right. I mean, they get, it worked out for Todd Gurley. Yeah. I mean, Todd Gurley came in and, and kicked some serious ass this year as a, mm-hmm. as a running back rookie. I know people don't want to hear this, you know, about the draft, but, you know, I know people think drafting for need is some sort of, you know, evil, you know, way to, you know, build a bad football team, but you're absolutely right. It's a marriage of a guy who will probably be there who's, who's a solid, right. great, you know, running back who we do need. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, here's a news flash for everybody. You know, GMs lie it, all the time, every day. To the <gasps> media. Not Scott. I know, shocker. Scott every would team, never lie to us. No. Every team, every GM takes the team needs into account somehow. Oh, sure. Nobody's out there just with a going, okay, I don't care what we need. We're just drafting whoever is rated the best, period. That never happens. Mm-hmm. You know, the team always, to now, some extent or another, takes the team needs into account. And that's a good one. I mean, you have a good point, Robbie. Uh, well, I agree hold, with you. Steve, hold on a yeah. second. There was there was a report that came out that the big board of Scotts had the top three players on the draft was number one, Amari Cooper. <coughs> number two, uh, what's his name, Dante Fowler, and number three was Brandon Sheriff. I can guarantee you, nobody knows. We weren't in the room. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I, I, I I agree. But when you're at the twenty first pick in the first round. I think you got to take the best talent you can get. And we're still not there to say, mm-hmm. oh, we don't need another one of those, except maybe outside linebacker, because, of course, we've gotten one yeah. the past two years. Plus, we got Junior Gillette. Right. It would just feel lonesome not to do I mean, another. Here's the thing 21st pick is a little bit more of a gamble than top five overall. So exactly. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know. So if Alex, would you take a juicy offer for like another second rounder and a third rounder or something to get get rid of that first pick if it's? You uh, know, no, that would be the question. Uh, I think could we've very been well without a offer. first pick so many years now. We gotta kind of cash in too. on it. That's true too. I'm agree. sick and tired of trading trading out of the first yeah, round. Yeah, if you want to trade back Draft in the second player. or the third round for extra picks, I I'm cool with Go that. Go for it, but. And we and we did that. Yeah. You know, we you can trade back in the second and third round. That's easy. Right. You know, if anybody has a team a player that they like in the lower rounds, they are more willing to trade those picks. And, yeah. Know, first round picks are too valuable them. still. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, shit, guys. God damn. We're looking forward now. I think we have, like Robbie said, a good foundation for this team. I'm looking forward to it. Hella disappointing night tonight. Hella disappointing look, tonight. Yeah, tonight I'm I'm sad. If I look forward to the future, uh, as long as we can maybe get Cousins back here for another couple of years, so we can continue Ooh. to build. I wanted to ask you guys that too. Yeah, is there any significance to his monster anticipated contract with losing this game, or is he still in store for that gigantic? He maybe went from a hundred million dollar contract to a ninety five million dollar contract. Ninety five. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, I, I think that. People need to relax about this. In, in the same way that you cannot pay him based on a couple games of 150 quarterback rating, you cannot uh, also say he's garbage. That one bad game, yeah. And, and t- to me, <clears throat> if it were me and it was a perfect world, I, I would want a contract that either is a three year contract or one we can get out of it year three that pays him, you know, somewhere in the teens. I think that's what I would mm-hmm. be willing to gamble on Kirk Cousins. I would not be willing to gamble. Somebody offers him, you know, five years at twenty-two million. I'd say, well, take it. Goodbye. I just don't think you can gamble like that with that kind of salary cap hit in today's NFL. It's looking like that's. I don't think he's happen, proven though, that. I don't think he's proven he's worth that yet. I think he's getting tagged. I think it's. Mm-hmm. I think it's exactly what's going to happen. Pro- I, I think that prove too. It next I, year, I think that they will tag him with the specific intent of. We want to do this so that you can't necessarily, you know, uh, talk to other teams without us getting something right off the bat. You know, like you're yeah. basically when you tag them, you're setting a minimum threshold for other teams. Like, right. Well, it depends yeah. on what tag you use. Okay, exclusive or non-exclusive. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Franchise. Well, there's two. Th- just to be clear, I know you guys know, but just to be clear for the audience, yeah. The the higher level fran- the higher level tag, uh, means you pay them the top five. Average the top five in their position, and no one else can negotiate with them. Period. You can't even make an offer. Low, the lower level tag means you pay them the top ten average, and um, teams can make an offer that you have the right to match. And if you lose them to that offer, you get two first round picks. Right. I would do the and lower level. Uh, I think. 
probably. Because, because I mean, you would be essentially gambling there that no one else is going to come by and offer him a massive contract. Mm-hmm. If that's the offer, if that's the right. Well, you if go. they do, again, you kind of gotta let them go. You gotta you let them go well, unless I mean, you really you gotta right. look at what the contract is. But yeah. But if it's over twenty five million, you gotta let them go because yeah. you could have had yes. him guaranteed for twenty five. Yeah. So that's the that's, that's the problem. Cr- twenty five is just an insane number. Right. You know, it, it's a real shame that if this is the direction we're going, that he didn't have another year or two on his rookie contract because the the bind we're in is that you need to see more of Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. but he doesn't have more time. That's the problem. I mean, he's played in what twenty you know. something games now. <laughs> yeah, sound less he than thirty. He was horrible in the first before this year. He was awful. You he know, had one terrible. good game this for Cleveland. The first year, yeah, a couple good games. He's made significant progress this year, but again, you know, I think you need to see more to see if he really is the quarterback of the future. We, we've we've yeah. seen the very positive I signs. I do like he's one more year. I get that, but but well, yeah, because if you expect him to put up one hundred and fifty eight quarterback ratings. You know, he'd be the greatest quarterback in the history of football. That's not going to happen. He's going to regress to some mean, and we need to see what that is. Mm-hmm. And the question mm-hmm. is, and I mean, I think, Steve, what you're saying is no, but I think what Robbie and I might be saying, I'm not sure. Actually, I shouldn't speak for Robbie, but I think what I'm saying is that 25 mil might be, I know it's a lot, but it might be nice just to lock him in, get that prove it year, and then let him go, especially because we have a little bit of space in the salary room. I know we should never play around with salary space, but if there's a year that you have to do it, this might be one of the years to do that. You know, And then you got to cut ties with them, get fucking rid of them, kick them to the curb. I think that's what yeah. we're cruising for. Unless unless you can get a deal that the 49ers got with Colin Kaepernick. I don't know if Kirk would agree to that, but unless you can get a deal like that that's team-friendly, mm-hmm. then I, I'd say just tag him and make him prove it next year. You know, I don't get the sense from Kirk that he's that team friendly about all of no. this. Some of his comments before kind of turned me off. He, he's I know we're getting of off topic here. But I want to get paid because, to be? let's face it, and this goes to how the team kind of treated him in the past, he kind of got screwed over by the team a few times already. Okay, it has nothing to do with that at all. Okay, let me tell you from the business perspective. Um, as a fourth-round pick, he got – by football standards, a very mod- modest signing bonus. Right. His average salary per year is not much more than the minimum average salary. No, it's uh, six what, fifty, even if, I think. That which is chump yeah. change in the, by NFL standards, not by our standards, by NFL standards. What he's talking about here is generational money. Right. Okay. Even for one year of a franchise tag, if that's the way the team goes, that's generational money here. Going to happen. Um, a, a, a player like him. I can't blame him at all, and his agent's telling him this, cash in now while you can. Mm -hmm. There's no loyalty here. It's all about business, and it's all about numbers. Right. And I don't blame him at all. Which is totally makes sense. I would have expected him to at least fake like he's willing to work with the team or in front of reporters say, I'd really like to stay here. Washington gave me my chance, and I'd really like to see it out. But he didn't didn't even put up appearances. Uh, He just kind of said, it depends on how much they want me. You know, if they're willing to pay me, well, they he's can also have me. got a pretty aggressive agent too. Does just he? So everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, don't if... expect him to be f- team friendly because he shouldn't be. Maybe on a third contract, maybe mm-hmm. so. Maybe you when know, he's when Tom he's Brady status, a big payout. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, I expect right, well, it to be at least you know one of those contracts that's like ten million this year, fifteen million the next, twenty or something the next. That kind of team friendly. Well, if they do sign him to multi year deal, there needs to be an out at about the third year. Right. Because the teams that have really sunk themselves, what I've always been afraid of this whole time is that they get locked into a $20 million a year salary because they freak out that we had a quarterback that did well. And so now we're stuck right, right. forever with a huge salary hit. That's what we The Joe need. Flacco $40 million in year yes, five kind exactly. of deal. <laughs> yeah, even the Ryan Tannehill deal, yeah. really big. Well, and that they're regretting. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, no, I was just saying I think the team has made huge mistakes with contracts in the past, but I do have some confidence in McLuhan and Bruce Allen, who's good generally with contract stuff. I have faith that they won't That's true. screw us over completely with this. Bruce so. might not know how to you know, identify a, a corner from a kicker, but he, he can do a contract nice. He can screw he's you a, out of your money. <laughs> he, he's a deal maker. Yeah. yeah. So at least we have that to look forward to. It should be a very interesting offseason. Uh, we can wrap it up there, but we should let all our intrepid listeners know. First of all, thank you one more time for sticking uh, th- through this season with us. It's been an incredible time. It's sad that it's over now for us, uh, Redskins-wise, but it has been a lot of fun. We made it to 1,000 followers. Thank you guys listening right now for that. You're the shit. We love you. 
I uh, am Twitter expecting followers, our, our listenership to take a nosedive in the next few weeks, though, now that the season's over. Don't say that and put ideas in their head. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, we, I was actually, that's you think, perfect. You think I'm negative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seriously. Uh, that's a great segue because we wanted to say the show, even though the skin season is over, the show's not going anywhere. We're going to continue to help you guys out. Keep Be your guide through this postseason process. We're going to keep doing shows once a week talking about uh, what's going on in the NFL. And then, obviously, we have the off season to look forward to where we do all kinds of sweet stuff interviews games all kinds of fun shit uh if you listen to us last off season you know what we're talking about so stay around because we're not going anywhere mm-hmm. right guys nope uh, i mean i'm never cool. I'm gonna go never. to athens for a little while but uh that's it <laughs> which is cool yeah. that's allowed take your vacations those of you at home but come back and listen to us when you return <laughs> Please. All right. Well, uh, it's been a hell of a time, and uh, and yeah, we will see you guys next time. Take care. Peace. Bye. Later.